had a had an email from the staff of Congressman Raul Labrador sometime during the overnight, and I was reading it this morning. Congressman is traveling in Nevada right now. If you didn't know this, he was originally a backer of Rand Paul. When Paul dropped out of the race, we asked him a couple of weeks ago on the air, uh, we asked Mr. Labrador, who are you going to be backing now when he pitched a few names? Ted Cruz's name was at the top of that list, and then last week he decided to get on board with the Cruz campaign. Tomorrow morning, if a travel schedule allows, he's going to join us, that is, Mr. Labrador. Maybe he'll bring along Mr. Cruz, who knows? But he's going to join us on air just about 8.15 tomorrow morning, uh, depending on airline flights. <laughs> and if you've ever flown in this country, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There is no guarantee anything is going to be on time. Seven minutes now after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 25 right now. How many of you thought you wouldn't have to scrape your windshield again? And then you had to do it today. Well, we're not going to see too many more of these, according to the weather forecast. Uh, we'll perhaps talk about that a little later in the program. I believe Steve Millington, the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party, is also going to be joining us a little later in this hour. He was the host at a big event at Canyon Crest on Saturday night that brought in the governor, the lieutenant governor, and a couple of U.S. senators and some congressmen. And uh, it was really a big bash for the Republican Party during a big election year. And so we'll talk to him about some of the things that he picked up while he was there, you know, walking around the room. You can hear a lot, and you can get some ideas about the direction people are going, who they may be backing, and what they have, uh, what plans of their own. In fact, Brad a Little has a new Facebook page, which should lead us to believe that he may be looking to move on from the lieutenant governor's role. Well, who wouldn't? A lieutenant governor, you, you're holding the hat for someone else. And at some point, you'd like to spread your wings and move on and and, and look for a larger office. That's just... People say, well, that's ambition. Well, you should be ambitious in this life. You know, you should want to move up and move ahead. It's important for you, and it's important for your family. Nine minutes now after 8 o'clock, and then coming up after 9 o'clock this morning, Alan Thompson is a documentary filmmaker. He's in Idaho. He's doing a project on the refugee resettlement program. There was a meeting about this at City Hall in Twin Falls last night. I read a story that Andrew Weeks put together for us at our website, newsradio1310.com. And it appears only one person really was there to speak in favor of this program. Everybody else has a different opinion. Now, I'm not going to delve into that because we'll spend a good part of the next hour on that. So even though we could call that top story, our top story will come up following the news at 9 o'clock. So stick around for that. I opened up talking about Nevada. There is some news coming out of our neighboring state this morning. It sent a bit of a chill up my spine. I saw this headline. This pro-choice GOP governor wants to succeed Scalia. This is from the Daily Signal. And they're talking about Brian Sandoval. He's a Republican. He's the governor of Nevada. Nevada is not really a red state. It's not really a blue state. It is somewhere in the middle. They call it purple, I guess, if you blend the two colors. And this is what it reads. Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval, a Republican, has risen as a rumored Supreme Court successor to the late Justice Antonin Scalia, but conservative lawyers say the unqualified, and that's in quotes, governor's nomination is highly unlikely. And here's a quote from Ed Whalen, president of the Ethics and Public Policy Center. This guy is a lightweight. He's not remotely qualified to fill any seat, much less Justice Scalia's. And then the writer goes on to say, Sandoval, a former federal judge, spoke with Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid, and Senator Dean Heller, Republican of Nevada, over the weekend regarding the high court's vacant seat according to Morning Consult. Sandoval told reporter Saturday he was honored that his name had surfaced among potential nominees. In other words, he's been mentioned on President Barack Obama's shortlist. The president believes, we'll tell you what, I'll get an abortion-loving Republican, I'll nominate him, and the Republicans will go along with us because Mitch McConnell and perhaps Chuck Grassley, they don't have any spine in this particular situation. When you realize that the, the, the life of an unborn child has been the major story swirling around the Supreme Court now for 43 years, what an insult. And Governor Sandoval may be a fine governor when it comes to business interests. He was appointed to the federal bench, served in, in a federal judgeship under President, President Bush, the second President Bush, before being elected governor. So he has a little judiciary experience. I realize people say that he's a lightweight, some of the commentators, but what I think they're referring to is this line, pro-choice. And among a Republican, or among Republicans, 
I don't think that's going to fly. I don't know how that, and there are so few pro-choice Republicans that you can find anywhere any longer. And if I had 15 minutes to chew on the governor's ear, you can bet I would certainly do that. And he wouldn't forget that he had that conversation with me. And I'm not sure, but I believe Governor Sandoval is a Roman Catholic, which brings up an entirely separate set of issues with all of this. And it just tells you that a lot of people out there, speaking of ambition and opportunity, yes, we should all have it, but not at the expense of the things we really believe deep down in. 25 right now, 812, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio 1310.com. And then this surfaced yesterday. C SPAN found this rummaging around in an old file, nearly a quarter century old. It's 20, 24 years ago, 1992. One of my former U.S. senators, Joe Biden, now serving as vice president of the United States, who, along with his boss, President Obama, has been caterwauling over the last several days about how the court needs to appoint a new liberal to replace Scalia. But Biden didn't always feel this way during an election year. And in 1992, he got up on the U.S. Senate floor, and this is what he had to say. It is my view that if a Supreme Court justice resigns tomorrow or within the next several weeks, or resigns at the end of the summer, President Bush should consider following the practice of a majority of his predecessors and not, and not name a nominee until after the November election is completed. Leftist media is really embarrassed by all of this, although they're trying to do their best to spin for, uh, for well, you know, 95% of news media being leftist. They're trying to do their best to spin for the Obama White House and cover for Joe Biden on this one. But Republicans are already calling it something along the lines of the Biden principle. In other words, well, hey, you know, if Joe said it, and he was the judiciary chairman at the time here in the Senate, then that's the rule, by golly, and we've got to follow it. I was watching a clip from MSDNC, and to, to see these people, they were just like contorting themselves. It was like a game of Twister, trying to cover up for his remarks and say, yeah, but, you know, I mean, it's just Joe Biden, and, eh, well, gee, well, liquors, uh, you know, Republicans are all evil anyway, and so, therefore, uh, Joe's always right, along with the president, and I'd like to have the president's babies, too. Well, you get that feeling from just about everybody over at MSDNC. And then Mr. Biden went on to make his argument and say, hey, you know, a lot of people think it's a great argument. There's a bit more to this. The Senate, too, Mr. President, must consider how it re would, would respond to a Supreme Court vacancy that would occur in the full throes of an election year. It is my view that if the president goes the way of Presidents Fillmore and Johnson and presses an election year nomination, the Senate Judiciary Committee should seriously consider not scheduling confirmation hearings on the nomination until ever, until after the political campaign season is over. So there you go, Vice President of the United States. Although it was 1992, he was the Judiciary Chairman in the U.S. Senate, saying that in an election year, you do not fill a vacancy on the Supreme Court. And all of these people, just last week, Mr. Biden went and gave some speech out in the Midwest, and he said, Oh, well, you know, it's like saying if the, the president and vice president died, we wouldn't have a president for a year. Now, maybe that wouldn't be such a bad thing. But he, he, he went out of his way and he said that. And here's this contradiction that surfaces. In other words, when we're in charge, this is a really good idea. When we're not in charge, this is a really bad idea. It is just cold, calculating politics. And I don't care how they spin it at the New York Times, at the Washington Post, Pravda on the Potomac, or over at MSDNC. They've already stated their position, and they have obstructed Republicans at every step, going all the way back to Robert Bork. Payback is a bitch, as they say, and now the Democrats are going to be feeling it. And I hope that they wail and scream and cry, because there'll be a lot of gnashing of teeth when they get to where they're eventually going. 816, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Caller joining us. You're up next. You're on the air. Hey, good morning. I thought it was interesting yesterday that Senator Grassley, who uh, now is chairman of the Judiciary Committee, took what uh, Vice President Biden said in 1992 and developed it into six or seven rules on this situation that he called and kept referring to 
as the Senator Biden rules. Yes. And handled it just in a masterful way, explaining why, in, in deference to the vice president and the things that he has said in the past, the Senate would move forward using the Biden rules as their foundation. Senator Grassley did a great job yesterday. Well, I'm glad to hear that because Senator Grassley was wavering a bit last week. Well, we need to continue to support him and people that have time, even in Idaho, to send him an, an email or his office an email or a note or a phone call, uh, I think is important that he knows that the nation, not just his uh, state, is, is watching him. I'd agree with that. I thank you much for the telephone call. And, hey, in this day and age, cell phones, if you've got a plan, you're not making a long-distance charge when you call a Senate office in Washington and make that pitch. And also in the computer age, you don't need to rely on me to give you the number. You can just go look it up on your own, uh, do a quick search on the computer, put in Chuck Grassley, you'll find his U.S. Senate office. And his committee, too, as well, should be listed there. So if you go to Senate Judiciary Committee, you're likely to find all of the details. Can I just mention one thing, though? Uh, the caller said masterful. I was watching a golf tournament one day, of all places where I got an English language lesson. I was, well, you know, golf people are coming out of Scotland and England and all that, a little bit stuffy. Masterful actually is a phrase that is used to, it, it means that uh, you are masterful over your slave. That is what, what we actually mean when somebody does something really ingenious like this, according to the golf announcers, is masterly. Yeah, I didn't know that. So uh, n I now know the difference. So if, if, you know, if I'm really good at talk radio, I'm masterly. If I'm going around enslaving and whipping my coworkers, I'm masterful. Uh, that's the difference between the two. We've got about a minute before the break. Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning. Hey, you got to learn something every day, and sometimes watching golf, I do. I'm, I'm just <laughs> What else are you going to do while you're watching golf? You all snore, I suppose. Uh, generally, what happens when I'm watching golf? Uh, Sunday afternoons and that guy in the background. And now he approaches the green. He's sitting a mile and a half away in a booth, and yet he's, he's whispering into the microphone. CBS used to actually pipe in the sounds of birds just to keep you awake, even though there weren't many birds on the golf course. Uh, you know, the chemicals, I guess, killed them all off, but they would pipe that in, and, and, and that was in hopes of keeping you awake. But if you're hearing a guy say, now he, he lines up for the short putt, and then chirp, 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 puts me to sleep every time. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Look, uh, a lot of things going on this morning. Steve Millington will be joining us a bit later. He's from the Twin Falls County Republican Party. In fact, he's the chairman. And uh, then in the next hour, we have a filmmaker who's coming to Twin Falls, Alan Thompson. He'll be talking with us. He's doing a film about the refugee resettlement program and the controversy surrounding it. It's 24. We are expected to get to 40 today. Let's, let's just hope. I do have to pass along uh, this morning. I've been sharing with you the last couple of weeks. We have a new advertiser with a radio station who is doing some great work. And a lot of people out there who have growing families, the choice of always, you know, either moving on to a bigger house or maybe doing some work around the current house, the latter sometimes is much better for your budget. He has a business called Dream Room Design, and they do a lot of work. They do outdoor rooms, uh, that is, you know, enclosed rooms, sun rooms. They do basements. In fact, they carry the total basement finishing product line specifically designed for the basement environment. All products are inorganic and will not grow mold or be ruined by a water event. Many people are hesitant to finish their basement, concerned that their investment will be ruined by a water event. Need more space, more bedrooms, or another bath? Well, how about a play area for the kids? Dream Room Design is the place to go, and you can check them out at the website, dreamroomdesign.com. That's dreamroomdesign.com. There was a picture up in, I think it was the area around Haley not long ago where an elk got into somebody's basement and they had the beautiful finished basement, but there was the elk and, and, and the deputies were in there and the, and the fish and game trying to remove him. And what they did is they were holding mattresses up as barriers just in case the elk decided to, to charge. And uh, the elk eventually was coaxed out of there, but cleaned up because, you know, after an elk stands in your basement for about four hours, um, Look, elk are like any other animal. They have to occasionally take a potty break. So the elk did it in that beautiful finished basement. It just And then there was the guy up in Sandpoint some months ago who ended up coming home and discovering that the bears had gotten into his house, emptied the refrigerator, and then before they left, they left some deposits as well. 
Uh, messy, messy, messy stuff. Steve Millington joining us. And Steve, you know, you, you being a local guy, you know how you deal with all, all of these uh, varmints and critters that show up, sometimes unwanted. Yeah, they they have a tendency to do that. You you make sure that you have the appropriate license and tag, and you shoot them. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and even if it's even if somebody says, "Well, it's out of season," tell you what, you, you can always say, "If he's coming at me through my living room, I felt I was in danger." I was in danger. Yeah, don't do that. Get the fishing game and get them out of there. And, and then the other thing is, I, every time I hear about that kind of a story, I ask myself, what's wrong with you people? Don't you close and lock yes. doors and windows? <laughs> I know we live in the country, and I'm oh. I'm as, as big a, a violator of that idea as anybody in the world. But um, I have a problem with skunks out in my neighborhood. And, and last week, your fish and game person was talking about skunks and, and general precautions. And, and I thought to myself, I think I better record this segment of the thing and listen to it two or three more times because it, they're, they're going to get active. You give them another week, at skunks and rock chucks, they're going to be active everywhere. So, yeah, we got to – it's summertime now. 27 minutes after 8 o'clock, and, of course, Steve will be talking in the next half hour with us about – some of what he picked up over the course of the weekend, Saturday night at a big event that, that he helped put together. And uh, it's 26 right now. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News 1310.com. You do lock, you've got to lock the doors. In fact, outside my new apartment complex, there are signs that popped up everywhere a few days ago saying, remember, lock your doors and lock your car doors. It's your responsibility because last Thursday morning I got up for work. Just about five before five o'clock came out and I threw my lunch pail in the truck, backed out, and then if you've ever driven a Jeep, people know the suspension in a Jeep isn't quite like driving a big old Oldsmobile 88, you know. Mm. We have speed bumps. So I try to sometimes drive around the speed bumps if I can. And and I remember thinking as I was doing that, I thought, gosh, if there was a police officer here right now, the police officer would think, what's up with that kook over there? He's driving erratically around those speed bumps. And as I got near the exit of the complex, I looked in my rearview mirror and there was a police officer behind me. <laughs> and uh, I came to work and Benito said, did you get pulled over? And I said, no. He said, well, I heard someone run your plate. And I said, ah, there was a guy in the parking lot. And not that he did anything wrong because as it turns out, a fellow apparently got a snoot full, walked into the wrong apartment, which was unlocked, got into bed with a young lady and... Uh, and then they later found him sleeping it off in the parking lot after he was chased out. So we do have to remind people it's important to lock those doors, uh, windows, and, and lock, lock your automobile, your, your truck, or your car as well. It's just, you know, it, it's common sense. And, and, and frankly, we live, in a, <clears throat> we live in a rural area, and we have just developed this thought process that says that doesn't happen here. But doggone it, it is starting to happen here, and we just got to take these precautions mm -hmm. before we wake up, and we're very sorry about the fact that that didn't happen. Right. So we just, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, people, but it's coming, and we better get prepared. Yeah, you know, you look at all of the development going on, and it's a pretty clear sign it's going to get urbanized in some spots yes, around sir. here. Uh, and that's on, that's on the way. We've got a short break coming up. Steve Millington from the Twin Falls County Republican Party. He chairs that operation. He's joining us in studio. And, of course, on Saturday night, they had a massive dinner at Canyon Crest. And, uh, and, and I, by the way, I knew that was going on because, I, speaking of that, I now live across the street, basically. And, yeah. And uh, I could hear all of the hooping and hollering. You could hear our noise. Sorry yes. about that. I tried to keep them under control. It was, <laughs> it was futile, so we just let them go. <laughs> Out there dancing on the edge of the canyon rim at midnight. Uh, we've got more on the way. <laughs> No, Republicans are usually home by 10 asleep. We've got more on the way. It's 25. Bill Colley with you as well on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. If you're setting your watch by it, 10 seconds away from 830.